Third thing I want to tell you about, even more surprising, <laughs> okay, I keep saying that. Um, <laughs> again, going back to phantom limb. Okay, so let's say you have a phantom limb, your arm has been amputated. I have an intact limb. You watch me, you watch my intact limb. She has a phantom limb and she watches my intact limb. And I simply scratch my intact limb and you watch. Guess what happens? You feel the scratch in your phantom limb. Now just think about it. Phantom limbs have been known for 200, 300 years. Nobody observed this. But if you, your phantom limb patient watches another person being touched in the same part, he feels it in his phantom limb. Why would this happen? The answer comes from a cluster of neurons called mirror neurons, which were discovered by Giacomo Rizzolatti in, in Parma in Italy. And, and, subs and other people have confirmed it since then. It's discovered in monkeys, but you see it in humans too. I'll tell you about one class of mirror neurons. Um, okay. So let's go to the back of the brain, that vertical strip of cortex. It's called the somatosensory cortex, and there's another strip behind it, which represent your touch, different parts of your skin and muscles being touched. Uh, depending on where you touch, you get corresponding activity in different parts of the somatosensory strip. So there's a complete map of the left side of the body and the right side of the brain. Now it turns out these cells normally respond to me being touched or you being touched, okay? If I touch your left side of the body, your right hemisphere fires, neurons fire. The extraordinary thing Rizzolari observed is if your right, let me switch here, it's easier. If somebody touches my left hand, the somatosensory cortex fires. But if I watch your left hand being touched, the cells here fire. That's astonishing, they're called mirror neurons. But what's going on is the brain, the neuron is saying effectively, it's doing a virtual reality simulation of your sensory system. It's saying, look buddy, the same thing is happening now as would happen if you are touched, when you're watching her being touched. So therefore, empathize with that touch, right? You are being touched, you're being touched the same way and you should feel the same thing that would happen if you yourself were being touched. It's called mirror neurons. But however, you don't actually, when somebody touches you and I watch, I'll be done in two minutes. If somebody touches you and I watch, I don't literally feel the touch sensation in my hand. If somebody pokes you with a needle, I empathize, but I don't say, ouch, withdraw my hand. Why not? The same neurons are firing. Same neurons fire if I'm poked with a needle as, if I, as when I watch you poke with a needle. But I empathize, but I don't literally feel it. The reason is that my skin is coming back, my own skin signals are going back to my brain and saying, look, I know these neurons are saying, ouch, but there's nothing happening in your skin, so shut up. <laughs> okay? So it's sending a null signal to my brain, veto, partially vetoing the output of the mirror neuron system and saying, don't experience pain. Empathize by all means, but don't literally experience it. Now what happens if, I remove, if somebody removes my arm is that null signal goes away and I watch it being poked with a needle. I feel the sensation in my hand and I feel the pain and I feel the touch. And I do say, ouch, and withdraw my phantom. Okay? So I, you know, the extraordinary implication of this is my brain is hooked up to your brain directly. The only thing that separates your qualia, your sensory experience from mine, is my bloody skin. I peel off my skin, I start literally experiencing your sensations. So this harks back to Eastern mysticism and philosophy. There's no fundamental distinction between your mind and my mind other than the skin, you know, sending veto signals. Remove the skin and I start blending into you. It's like, in other words, it's the world's first internet of virtual reality. So I call these neurons, I call these neurons Gandhi neurons. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll conclu conclude with one final remark. This woman who I showed this on, now I've shown this on a number of people. This woman I showed this on went home and she phoned me the next day and she said, Dr. Ramachandran, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? What's going on? Oh my God, you're not going to believe it. I said, what? You know, I have this excruciating pain in my phantom finger, my phantom thumb. And there's nothing I could do about it. I, I haven't tried your mirror yet, but I haven't, I have nothing I could do about it. Now I ask my husband to massage his thumb while I watch. And I get this phantom massage in my thumb that relieves the phantom pain. Okay? We haven't tried this in the clinic yet uh, on double-blind controls, but we're planning to. Thank you very much. <laughs>